Hi, I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back. If you are a regular visitor here, if this is your first time, a big welcome to you. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. So today I'm bringing you one of my short heads up videos. And this one is for the sign of Leo. And that's whether you are sun in Leo or whether you have your rising sign, also known as the Ascendant in Leo. So this is for all the astrological energies you need to understand about the month of March 2023. Wow, this is the month, the month when everything changes. Is it changing for the, for the, for the good or for the bad? Well, depends how we view those two polarities, doesn't it? Because sometimes what seems like not so good turns out to be good. So let's just unpack the energies and I'll explain why March is such a game-changing month and why it is going to be the month that in a few months and even in a few years, you will look back and you will say, ah, that was when things started to shift. March 2023. Let's start with your eighth house Pisces. This part of your chart is to do with other people's money. It's to do with your pension, with um, anything of that nature, also joint finance. It's also transformation. It's also beginnings and endings. It's also sexual power. So it has, it, it, you see, originally it's a Scorpio house because it's the eighth house. And Scorpio has all these very deep, dark kind of, you know, energies, which um, some of the other signs don't actually access. But at least we get them when we, we go around our particular zodiac chart. So Mercury, our planet of communication and thought starts the month in your eighth house Pisces. So it may be that on just a very mundane level, you're sorting out the figures. You're dotting the I's and crossing the T's with anything to do with your financial setup, anything to do with joint finances, with investments. Anything of that nature can be around with this energy. By the 19th, Mercury moves into your ninth house Aries. So when it moves in here, it's going to shift your focus of attention more to what's happening overseas. Long distance travel. You might be thinking of making a trip somewhere. You may even be traveling at this time. Also, it's very much about you improving your knowledge and maybe doing a lot of reading, writing, but just expanding your particular field of knowledge in the areas that you're passionate about, those subjects you love. Now let's move on to the 7th of March, because this is the first of one of the two very significant dates for the month of March. First of all, we have a full moon in Virgo. It's in your second house of finance. So how is this going to play out? Well, it's quite interesting because I think before I look at that, and of course I will do a separate video for the full moon in Virgo, but let's look at what is happening in the opposite house, the eighth house. Because Saturn, my big outer boy of restriction, of timing, of limits, of structure. Saturn moves into Pisces on the 7th of March, the same day as the full moon. So this is your eighth house. This is other people's money, finances of any description. So it could be with this kind of energy that one um, source of, of payment, perhaps, that you've been paying out stops, ceases. It could also be that 
um, some form of payment that you need to structure, you need to start paying into, so that it's going to, you know, that there, 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 there could be many interpretations of this energy, but it's about perhaps changing ways and methods that you've actually looked after your finances. I mean, Leo, you, you're, you're quite good at this because you're a fixed sign. So you usually try to make sure that you balance the books. And this may just be the mundane um, annual looking at the accounts and having to do the budgeting that comes with this. But that's not what Saturn is going to be about in your eighth house, Pisces. Saturn is going to be actually bringing structure into your dreams in terms of anything that you feel intuitively drawn to. Saturn will help you put structure in that. Also, Saturn in this part of your chart can remove people from your life. Um, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, like, die. <laughs> it can just mean that it's time for them to not be in your life. But also, what is so interesting, it can also mean commitment to a relationship that has formed during Saturn's move through your seventh house of Aquarius. It really is hugely interesting the way these energies kind of play out. And while Saturn sits on that kind of cusp, if you like, of the seventh and eighth house, it could certainly bring around some kind of commitment in a business or a love relationship or even both. Let's see what else is going on, because we've also got on the 12th of March in your ninth house, which is Aries, which is all about travel, long distance travel and learning. You've had Chiron here for some time, the wounded healer. And I think it's exposed the areas of your particular kind of um, education, which has been lacking and so that you've worked hard to fill those gaps whilst Chiron has been transiting this, this part of the chart. Also, I think you will have found any of you that have, have, have sought counselling or therapy during this time of Chiron here will have benefited greatly from it. I think it will have been hugely helpful for you. Now, Jupiter is going to be conjunct Chiron. Jupiter a massive outer planet of opportunity, growth, expansion, luck. Jupiter is in a sense neutral until whatever we do affects the way Jupiter's energy plays out. So if there's something that needs to be exposed, some gaping wound in your life, in your um, in your learning, Jupiter's going to highlight that. But at least if you know, you can do something about it. The other side of this Jupiter energy can be that it brings the opportunity for learning more about subjects which really help you heal your soul, your inner self. So there can be lots of ways to interpret this energy. Now, the next kind of big shift of energy is when the sun, of course, will move also on the 20th with the spring equinox out of your eighth house, Pisces, and also into your ninth house, Aries. So we've got all this kind of energy focused on Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, and to a certain degree, Taurus. <coughs> Excuse me, Leo. So, um, oh dear, pouring it all down me. Never mind. Um, so, with the sun moving into Aries, it again sheds light on perhaps 
a need in you, a desire, a wish, which we probably all get at this time of year, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, because we're coming out of winter, to travel, to find the sun, to seek the sun. So that might be something that is very much in your kind of topmost part of your mind and thinking at the moment, Leo. So after this energy, the day after on the 21st, we have the new moon in Aries in this part of your chart. So you can see how all the planets are really tightly packed in this part of your chart. So certainly, I think the issues that are going to come up for you around March, and certainly from the mid of, middle of March onwards, are going to be around travel in some form or other. You might be making plans, booking something, but to some degree, that is going to feature and figure in your life. Also on the 21st, in, um, in Taurus, we have Venus, our planet of love and relationship. Now, Venus rules Taurus, so it's in a very good position in this part of your chart that, of course, is to do with your career. Also, your public image. How we see you, Leo, out there on your centre stage where you love to be, or at least some of you Leos do. And on the 21st, Venus will be conjunct the North Node. Now, the North Node you've had in, your, in, in the sign of Taurus for some time, for nearly 18 months. And this is about the destiny of your particular career. If you're retired, this is about your passion. This is whatever it is that you want to achieve, that fulfills you, that really, really makes you feel better about life. And so Venus conjunct the North Node is giving kind of um, value to what it is you're working on you could see a new income stream coming in through whatever it is you're working on. It's certainly very positive because then, just after that, on the 30th, Venus will be conjunct Uranus, my big outer boy Uranus, our planet of the unexpected, change, freedom, truth, invention, also in this part of your chart. Now, whilst Uranus has been transiting Taurus in your 10th house, a lot of you have undergone huge changes with the work you do. Some of you will have changed job, completely changed direction, but you certainly will have been probably propelled out much more into the public kind of realm, public eye. Venus being conjunct Uranus, I think just underlines what's already come from Venus conjunct the North Node, that what you're going to experience is um, some surprising opportunity that comes in that can, as I say, um, possibly make you, make you money. So that's really good en energy. And then we come, of course, to the other major shift that takes place in March. And this, of course, is about our dwarf planet, but he is a planet nevertheless, Pluto, our planet of transformation, our planet of power, our planet of beginnings and endings, change. Pluto enters Aquarius on the 23rd. Okay, so Pluto is only going to be flirting with your seventh house for the next 18 months or so because Pluto doesn't fully move in to your house of significant relationships until the end of 2024. But you're certainly going to get a taste of how things could change significantly in your 
private life to do with your significant relationships or business relationships. This is super energy. You know, Pluto is going to be here for 20 years. And I think following on the footsteps of Saturn, who has perhaps brought someone new into your life if you're single, or certainly brought opportunities in for a more committed kind of relationship, then Pluto coming in after Saturn is bringing the, the power and the transformative energies into your relationships where you've never experienced that kind of uh, energy before. So it's hugely powerful energy for you, Leo. It really is a kind of game changer in your personal relationships. And I think that um, what you'll notice is that there's a richness. There's, you will find the alchemical gold in the relationships that you have. So anything that has not gone down to the depths when it perhaps really should have done has the potential for that to happen. So I am, of course, doing a separate video about Pluto in Aquarius, but um, that's on the 23rd that Pluto actually dips his toes in. So, you know, this month is massive. I'll just finish on that note. This month is massive. And it really is a game-changing month. But if we sit back and do nothing, you know what? Nothing happens. We have to work with the energies. But sometimes when we sit back and do nothing, the universe will create an event that forces us to change. It's much better to be in command of these energies, to work with them, to work with that flow. Then you really reap the rewards of what the universe and the cosmos is trying to give you. So on that note, thank you so much for joining me for your Leo March heads up. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, all those things. It's so lovely. So many of you put some beautiful comments in the comment section. Thank you so much. I read them all. I love them all. I try and answer them all. And I don't answer every single one because obviously it gets to a point where you think, um, I, I'm not quite sure what to say all the time. But please know that it's it, I, it, with huge gratitude that I thank you for the support you're all giving me for my channel. It means a lot, I can tell you. So on that note, thank you so much. And I will say bye for now. And I'll see you next time.